These news footages in 2014 and 2016 are supposed to be showing us the same girl, Japanese princess, Aiko. In the left one filmed in 2014, she is 13 and with her parents the crown prince and crown princess. In the right one filmed in 2016, princess Aiko is supposed to be 15. Between the crown prince and crown princess, there is only one child. And that child is female and named Aiko. As you noticed, the two girls in the left and right footages don't resemble to each other at all. Strange to say, they look one and the same girl in the eye of most Japanese people. They say, she lost her weight considerably. She must be on diet. Or, she became much prettier. For most people it is almost taboo to come forward and say, they are different girls. That means the new one is not real princess but a fake to deceive general public. For most Japanese people, it's very difficult to imagine that their imperial family is using a fake princess to deceive its people. But there would be nobody outside Japan who will think those two girls are one and the same girl. In foreigners I, it is beyond argument that the two girls in the left and the right are simply different. For most Japanese people, that simple answer is so devastating to their imperial household worship. The imperial family is in a way a sacred family to Japanese people. They are supposed to be godlike beings and far above worldly foul play. There has long been a rumor that Princess Aiko has a body double. But such a story has been brushed aside as just an urban legend without good evidence. This video is going to show you that there is at least one substitute girl who is impersonating as genuine Princess Aiko. It demonstrates the fact scientifically, objectively, anatomically and numerically. In other words, conclusively, undeniably, irrefutably, indisputably. Before this demonstration, fake princess story has belonged to urban legend for more than 10 years. But after this demonstration, it is an established fact beyond all doubts. In order to tell the fake from the genuine, we need to have the indisputable genuine in the beginning. Needless to say, we treat only visual records, that is, pictures and videos. So we need to have such authentic originals. Do we have any? Of course, we have some. The method we apply is very simple. Stunningly simple. What we use is eye tooth ratio. Eye tooth ratio doesn't change much by age in normal cases. It can be considered almost immutable for life. We can calculate the ratio simply by measuring the distance between two eyes and the distance to the frontal upper teeth from the line connecting the two eyes. Exactly speaking, the word eye means the center of pupil when looking right ahead. The ratio can be expressed by a vertical rectangle. This ratio is not so unique to each person as fingerprints. Far from it. Remember that the ratio is denoted in only three digits, such as 1.11 or 1.18 and the first digit is always 1. Moreover, the second digit can be only from 0 to 3, that is, only 4 variables. Only the third digit has full stretch from 0 to 9. So eye tooth ratio has very limited range. Many people share the same ratio, of course, while having completely different faces. Roughly speaking, it's like height of people. Many people share the same height. The same height is no proof that two persons are one and the same person. So eye tooth ratio doesn't sound especially promising to distinguish the original from the fake. But eye tooth ratio has not only weak points but also strong points. The strongest point is that having different ratios means that the two are completely different people no matter how much alike they may look. 
so we are supposed to confirm the difference of ratios to prove the two persons in the visual records are different beyond all doubt. And it is possible. If we can confirm that there is sufficient difference, we can say, bingo. The second strong point is that we don't care about facial impressions at all. We can, or rather, we should, forget about facial images. We don't have to compare each facial characteristic of the two persons in pictures. We only have to measure eye-tooth ratios alone. I know some people are impatient to scream that shooting angle of camera makes a great difference of the ratios. I chose pictures in which faces look straight ahead as much as possible so that the ratios will easily converge. And I almost succeeded in that as the video eloquently shows. I used more than one pictures. If I used only one picture, you can criticize me forever. But I used multiple pictures and got the same ratio. You have no reason to dog me. Next comes this criticism, I know. They want to say like this. The girls in question are in the process of physical growth. So the ratios can be unstable and changing. So eye tooth ratio is unreliable. This criticism is so disappointingly naive that I have to answer containing my irritation. Firstly, we are talking about ratios not absolute numerical values. Secondly, we are treating living things which are capable of organic growth not machines which are incapable of such growth. As a person grows, the size will inevitably change. Normally, multiply but ratios don't change much. They stay almost the same even if the absolute numerical values increase greatly. If the distance of the both eyes widens as a person grows, the distance from the eyes to the frontal upper teeth widens accordingly to maintain the same ratios engraved in DNA. Height of ears. Only one picture tells many things. And multiple face pictures of the same person scream quite a lot. When it comes to height of ears, multiple pictures can often provide us indisputable results. On top of the difference of eye tooth ratio, the difference of ear heights is a coup de grace. This makes the difference still greater. Vampire teeth. Vampire teeth are not so uncommon in Japan because they don't care so much about irregularities of teeth in general as Americans do. They even think vampire teeth are charming with girls. Very few undergo orthodontic treatment in Japan. This substitute princess happened to have such vampire teeth while the real one has none at all. Since the very early days of Princess I, quote, several typical symptoms have been pointed out which show autism and Asperger syndrome. Her developmental disorder is said to have resulted from artificial insemination because of the father's extremely low sperm count. Many dynasties in the world often suffer such genetic problems owing to generations of inbreeding. Professional psychiatrists and some parents of developmental disorder children noticed the symptoms in I, Ko's pictures and videos even before she went to elementary school. Developmental disorder can be only physical or only mental. But in I, Ko's case, she appears to suffer in both ways. Her facial expressions and bodily conditions seem to reveal that she has physical problems as well as mental problems.
As for physical problems, it is confirmed that she has at least some disabilities in her hand. It is evident from many pictures and videos that she has unusually stiff hands. She appears to be unable to wave with her right hand. She is consistently waving with her left hand while her parents are always waving with their right hands beside her. Even with the left hand, she appears to have trouble in waving properly. She faintly waves her left hand with its palm inward or at most almost at right angle toward target people. We can't research on her unspoken trouble in her waving and other conditions without great compassion. We are naturally led to wonder why her parents haven't pronounced that their daughter had some difficulties in her daily life. Such pronouncement would have saved the necessity of using a substitute of princess. I, co for good. Medically speaking, it is very doubtful that her conditions will improve greatly as time passes by. So her parents have had enough time to make pronouncement, but they seem to have chosen an alternative way. Instead of the simplest and straightforward way, they seems to have started outrageous plots secretly. Instead of coming out with honest pronouncement, they started using a better looking normal child as the secret substitute for their own daughter. For many years, they have used a substitute girl occasionally in place of the real princess, I, co especially when they need to show the normal growth of imperial princess. But to show a fake to people is to deceive people. A fake is a lie. To show a fake is to tell a lie. To deceive Japanese nation systematically is a national fraud. A fraud is a crime. Systematic criminal deception on national scale is a perfect conspiracy. So they started conspiracy involving a substitute girl. That means they also commit child abuse. There have been many pictures and footages showing the crown prince and princess with the substitute of their daughter, all waving with their right hands. But how can parents take another parent's normal child along with them in public while locking up their own handicapped child at home? Is this normal sense of parents with a handicapped child? Is it so difficult for a royal couple to pronounce the fact that their child is handicapped and have some troubles in his or her daily life? Belgian precedent. Actually there is a precedent. The article says in 2016 as follows, September marks the start of the school year for many children in Belgium and Prince Emmanuel is no different. King Philippe and Queen Mathilde's younger son was pictured heading back to school accompanied by his father. For the past couple of years Emmanuel has been attending the Eureka School, which specializes in teaching children with learning disabilities, located 20 kilometers away from Brussels. The 10-year-old prince, who reportedly has dyslexia, arrived in good spirits and looked more than ready for his first day. Emmanuel used to attend another school in Brussels, the school his three siblings also attend. But in 2012 it was announced that he was moving to the special Eureka school for disabled children. So there's at least a precedent that one of the world royal families announced that they have a disabled child and it is known to the whole nation. Belgian king and queen didn't try to hide the fact that one of their children had disabilities in learning. How encouraging to many Belgian parents who have children with developmental disorders, such as autism and Asperger's syndrome. What would happen if Belgian king and queen decided to hide the fact and locked up their handicapped child into a room deep inside the palace? And what would Belgian people think if the couple start using a substitute child as their royal and normal child for media exposure? But something like this seems to have happened in Japan. And an innocent girl has been exploited as the substitute for the real imperial princess for many years. 
it is very unlikely that she underwent no plastic surgery in order to resemble the real princess as much as possible. Of course, such conspiracy would be impossible without isolating the substitute girl from her real biological parents for good. This national hoax requires the highest level of secrecy. And the substitute girl would not be allowed to make friends at school or anywhere. She is used as a useful slave. A slave without any human rights and any chance of escape. It would be impossible to maintain such a conspiracy without ease and human intervention and treatment. To make a long story short, it's a national scale hoax, involving at least two child abuse victims. They are an abused slave, and an abused princess. But Japanese police would be able to do nothing, because of imperial family's immunity from arrest. Japanese royals can do anything criminal. They can even commit murder and stay untouched by the police even by a finger. If they are completely free to commit murder thanks to their royal immunity from arrest, child abuse is a piece of cake. These two girls are officially incompatible. They must not be seen side by side or on the same day. There is only one princess, I, Ko, in the world. There must not be two, I, Ko's or, three, I, Ko's. So if one is pronounced as princess, I, Ko and dominantly passes as such on the media, 
the existence of the other becomes a very compromising burden. The disqualified counterpart is forced to live a shadowy, secluded life for life. The safety of real Princess Aiko hasn't been confirmed for nearly two years. Is she alive? All we have been shown is the smiling substitute, who waves not her left hand but her right hand naturally along with a royal couple beside her. Even if she is alive, it is logically presumed that she is confined deep into the Imperial residence. Logically speaking, she is not also allowed to go to school now after such generous media exposure of the substitute. She is officially non-existent now. Given that the substitute has been used so often these years, the original could be considered as a compromising burden by her real parents now. Needless to say, she is another case of serious child abuse.